Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chaos Drive. Lately I've been getting requests to make a tutorial on how to make a character customization system like I did in the fourth devlog of my game I'm working on. So here it is, an ultra simplified version of my character customization system. The first and arguably most important step is the art process. I don't mean it's important to be good at art, but it is important to make sure each of the features are lined up correctly on the face. So here I am making a simple head. In this video, I'm going to make four features, skin color, eye color, hairstyle, and hair color. So the head will be on its own layer, but make sure that it is white so that we can change the color effectively in Game Maker Studio later on. Next I made the eyes. The colored part of the eye will be on a separate layer because we are not going to color the outside of the eye or eyebrows. If you get confused, I've labeled my layers at the bottom so you can see exactly what is on each layer. Next is the hair. This will be on its own layer as well. I made three different hairstyles that each have their own frame. I drew them with dark colors, but they need to be changed to white afterwards so we can apply our own color to them in the game engine. You just repeat this process for however many different features you decide to have. Once you're done, export each layer and frame as separate images. So I've now opened up a project in Game Maker Studio and I've already imported the images. Keep in mind that you want all the hairstyles to be in the same sprite, just different sub-images. I've also created a button sprite for later on. After this, create an object for the character customization. This object is going to handle the whole system. In the create event of this object, I have set a couple things and I'll explain them now. First is a variable called feature. This is a 2D array variable. The first index is which category, and the second index is the exact feature in that category. So feature zero, zero is going to be the first skin color. This is a string array that stores the name of that feature so we can display it later. After that is a variable called selected feature. This is a 1D array that keeps track of which feature is selected in each category. For example, selected feature zero is going to keep track of which skin color you have selected. Next is a variable called selected menu. This keeps track of which category you are currently in, like skin color, eye color, hairstyle, or hair color. Then the menu variable is a 1D array that holds the name of each category. I know that was a lot. Feel free to pause or go back so you understand everything. So we are going to jump into the draw event. First we will actually draw the character. So the first thing we need to draw is the head because it's going to be behind all of the other features. Just use Draw Sprite X, draw it at X and Y. X scale and I scale are both one zero rotation and this is where we want to put the skin color. For this we are going to go back to the create event and make a function called get skin color. This function will have one argument called skin color. Basically what we need this function to do is take whichever skin color we have selected and return the actual color value so we can use it. So we will write a switch statement using skin color as the argument. We will make a case for each skin color we have, so in total there will be four cases. In each case we will simply return a color value. I just went back and forth to find the RGB values of the colors I wanted and then put them in. After this function is done we have to make the same thing two more times for eye color and hair color. You can copy and paste, but switch the variable names and the amount of cases depending on how many eye colors and hair colors you have. Once we have those functions set up, drawing the character is very simple. Back in the draw event, in the color parameter, you want to put get skin color and for the argument type in selected feature zero. This will input whichever skin color is currently selected into the get skin color function, which will then return the correct color value. The next thing to draw is the eye color. Just like the head, we use a draw sprite x function. Put in the same x and y coordinates as the head. For the color this time, put get eye color and type in selected feature 1 for the argument. Next is the outside of the eye. For this we don't need to change the color, so just draw the sprite normally using white as the color parameter. Lastly, the hair. Use your hair sprite, but for the sub-image you need to type in selected feature 2. This is the hairstyle. So the hairstyle will affect which sub-image of the hair sprite we draw. And then, for color you want to put hair color. So hair get color and put in selected feature 3 for the argument. Great, now let's put our object in a room to test it out and run the game. Perfect. As you can see, all of the first features are selected by default. We have red skin, brown eyes, and black wavy hair. So this means that the drawing is working correctly. Now, 
we just need to make it so the player can change the features. So go back into the draw event. We are going to make a for loop. If you don't know what a for loop is, you should probably go watch some videos on it before proceeding, just so you understand what's going on here. i equals zero. i is less than array length feature, i plus equals one. So this loop will run once for each category we have. So four times inside the loop, we want to draw a button for each category. So we use draw sprite and draw our button sprite. You should figure out where you want to draw these, but I am going to draw the button starting at 4-4. Four, four. For the Y value though, you want to add a certain amount of pixels for each button, so instead of being drawn right on top of each other, they are drawn below one another. Perfect, this is a good start. Now we want to label them. So underneath the sprite drawing, I'm going to set the draw color to black. Now I'm going to use the draw text function. I will draw it at 6-6, but remember to add the 16 times I. The string we want to display is going to be menu I. This is the variable we created earlier that displays the names of the categories. Let's run the game and see how it looks. Okay, the text is way too big. So I'm going to turn this draw text function into draw text transformed. Now it allows me to put in an X and Y scale for the text. You might not need to do this if the text already fits your game, but I need to make it smaller for mine. Perfect. Uh, looks good now. Now before we make it so you can click on the buttons, we are going to draw the feature list. This is going to be very similar to how we drew the menu. So you can just copy the for loop, except instead of putting I is less than array length feature, put I is less than array length feature selected menu. This is going to return the number of features we have in the selected category. So for each one of those, the loop is going to run once. Just like the other loop, we are going to draw the buttons, except change the X value. I kept the Y value the same because I wanted them to line up. I just changed the X value to 85, run the game and see how it looks. Perfect, now we have another list of buttons for the individual features. Let's go ahead and label these as well. Following the same process as the other loop, draw text transformed, change the X value to match up with the new buttons. For the string, we are going to put feature selected menu I. Run the game. Awesome, now we have two list of labeled buttons. The only thing left to do is make it so we can click the buttons. In the first for loop, underneath the other code, type if point in rectangle, mouse x, mouse y, and then the x and y coordinates of your menu buttons. Make sure to include the 16 times i. This will check to see if our mouse is on the button. If it is, I'm going to draw a transparent white rectangle over it to show that we are on the button. So set the draw color to white and set the draw alpha to 0.5. Next, draw a rectangle. Input the starting and ending x and y coordinates of the button and set outline to false. After this, make sure to reset your draw color to black and set your draw alpha back to 1. If you run the game now, you should see that when the mouse is over the menu buttons, the buttons light up. Perfect. Now we can copy and paste that code into the other for loop for the features. Make sure to change the X and Y coordinates to fit the other set of buttons though. Now let's make it so you can click. Inside the point in rectangle function, type if mouse check button, press M bar left. This will check if we press the left mouse button. If we do, we simply want to set the selected menu to I. In other words, set the selected menu to whichever button the mouse is on. Run the game. As you can see, if we press one of the menu buttons, the feature list changes to whichever category we selected. Now repeat the same thing in the other for loop for the features. But instead of setting the selected menu to I, you want to set selected feature selected menu to I. Finally, it is done. Run the game to test it. We can now press on any feature and change the appearance of the character. This was a very simplified version of a character customization system. It works on the same logic I used for the one in my game. Hopefully it gave you some insight on how to create one for your game. If you like this video, consider checking out my devlogs. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.